Hi there and welcome to The History Teacher. This revision video covers Weimar and Nazi Germany from the GCSE Edexcel 9 to 1 course. Hopefully you'll also find it useful if you're studying any of the other exam boards or if, like me, you just love history. I'm 100% self-funded so if you like my content please consider buying me a coffee to keep me going. Stresman's economic and foreign policy changes of the 1920s led to a time of important changes in politics, culture and living standards for German people. As the German economy improved, people found they had more disposable income and work conditions were improved for many. Women also benefited from the changes, especially in the political structure, and as the financial hardships retreated, people had more time to focus on art, cinema and architecture. You will remember that in order to gain support for the new Weimar Republic, President Ebert had met with trade unions to gain their support. This policy of working with the trade unions led to important changes in working and living conditions. Between 1925 and 27, the average working week dropped from 50 hours to 46 and wages rose by around 25% between 1925 and 28. Due to the high levels of unemployment, a new unemployment insurance was introduced in 1927. Workers were charged 3% of their wages, which then provided them with insurance against unemployment or sickness. Additionally, from 1925 to 29, 37,000 new homes were built by private companies and a further 64,000 homes were built by a government scheme. This helped to ease the housing shortage and meant many Germans had new homes with modern facilities including indoor plumbing. Further improvements were made for those who had been injured during World War I when a veteran's pension was introduced in 1920, which not only supported veterans but widows and children also. Finally, the education system began to offer more opportunities to young people who wanted to attend university, and the number in higher education increased by nearly 60% by 1928. On the whole, these changes were popular, but big business was not happy as they saw the working changes as government interference in what they saw as their right to set wages and working hours. It also upset the lower middle classes because they saw the policy changes as focused on the working class and felt they had been ignored. Women had benefited greatly from the Weimar constitution. They were now allowed to vote and to stand for election. Women did take advantage of their new rights. By 1932, 10% of the Reichstag was female and around 90% of women voted in the new elections. The constitution also stated that women had equal rights to men and women were allowed to enter all professions. As in Britain, the work of women in the war had been crucial and by 1918, 75% of women were in work. But after the war, women's employment had returned to roughly the same level as before the war. However, new part-time jobs in retail and service were created, which benefited women who had children. And women in professional jobs, such as doctors and teachers, doubled in the 1920s. Not everything was good, though. Women were paid on average 33% less than men, and women were still expected to give up work when they got married. For some women, especially young women living in the cities, the improvements brought exciting changes. They had more disposable income, which meant they could buy clothes, makeup, and jewelry. The fashion was to cut their hair short, and hemlines were rising. Women could smoke and drink and go out unaccompanied. Some women felt free and embraced the new opportunities. However, the changes for women were not popular with everyone. The birth rate was falling and the divorce rate was increasing, which some were horrified at because they saw a woman's role as that of a wife and mother. Some men saw the new jobs and financial freedom for women as a threat to their own role in society. Some people even blamed the economic problems of the 1920s on women for upsetting the economic balance. The final big change of the 1920s was in culture. The Weimar Constitution had allowed freedom of speech and the economic recovery in the later 1920s meant more money was available to fund the arts. These led to a change in thinking about art. The old ideas of romanticism were rejected in favour of an objective view showing the world as it really was. The arts also began to look forward instead of back. Modernist art, cinema and architecture began to be more futuristic in their design and the school of expressionism focused on the feelings and interpretations of the artist. The government provided grants to artists, directors and musicians which helped to fund new ideas. In art, painters like Otto Dix and George Grosch painted impressionist scenes from German life. These were critical of Germany and expressed the painter's opinions. Architecture was largely influenced by the Bauhaus movement. The Bauhaus was an arts college in Berlin and it focused on simple lines and artisanship. It was also fascinated by the beauty in technology. Eric Mendelssohn was influenced by this thinking when he designed the Einstein Tower, which was an observatory shaped like a rocket. 
Finally, cinema was a new and exciting medium, which also took off in Germany. Directors received government funding, and one of the world's first horror movies, The Cabinet of Dr. Caligari, was made in Germany. Perhaps the most famous German movie of this period is Metropolis, directed by Fritz Lang, a science fiction movie which looked with optimism at the technological changes the 20th century would bring. By 1932, 3,800 German cinemas could show talkies, movies with sound. However, as with all the changes of the 1920s, not everyone liked these changes. Some left-wing parties said the money was wasted when there were still people going hungry, while those on the right saw them as an insult to the traditions of Germany. Okay, that is everything you need to know about the cultural and political changes of the 1920s. Don't forget, you must like and subscribe and leave me a comment because YouTube loves these things and I love to hear from you. And I always reply to you as quickly as I can and I am 100% self-funded, so please don't forget if you like my content, I would really appreciate if you buy me a coffee to keep me going. The link is in the description and that is everything for today and I will see you next time.